Okay, so now that we have our point data display, the question is, how do we get in a format where we can determine acreages? How do we get this into a continuous surface? And that is the process called interpolation. And interpolation, just very briefly, is a statistical process that looks at the point and the points around it to try to estimate the values between those points. So. Um, this is an article from uh, ArcUser, this is from 2004, but um, if you're interested in the specifics of it and some of the different types, there's several different types of interpolation, I highly suggest that you take a look at this. Um, there's several that are offered within ArcMap, um, IDW, Spline, Krieging, Point Interpretation, Natural Neighbor. They all have different uses, um, they're all good for specific things. Um, we tried several of these, and the one that worked best for us was Krieging. And Krieging, uh, they reference it here, but based on statistics and as a more advanced prediction service modeling, and that's what we found through um, through some of our uh, trial and errors. But again, this is from uh, July, September 2004, ARC user. So um, if you want some more specific specifics, I suggest you read through it. It's a very well-written article. It's a good summary of the different uh, processes. So back to ArcMap. So we've got our point data up. Um, we're going to open up Arc Toolbox, and before you do this, make sure that you have um, have your extensions. Make sure you have Spatial Analyst. Make sure you have the, the license for Spatial Analyst. Um, that box checked, and then um, we'll go down to uh, Spatial Analyst Tools, and there's many. Here we go, and we're looking for interpolation. So here's all the different types of interpolation. Like I said, there's several. Krieging worked best for us. You can mess around with it. You can read that article. Um, every project's different. Some might work better for yours, but this is the one that worked for us. Um, so it brings up our screen, Krieging screen. Got a drop down. It's going to bring up all the potential point data that you have. This one, we only have one, which is what we're working with. The Z values is very important. So what is your third value? For this, this is the tidal inundation frequency. This is our field three to make sure that's right. This is our output. Point that wherever you want. Ordinary, spherical, these are the defaults. They seem to work well. Um, the cell size you might want to mess around with. Um, this is basically the resolution of your the surface that you're going to get. Um, found for a project this size this is kind of high so I, I've dropped it down to five and that gives us a little bit re better resolution um, search radius and this is again dependent on your project because of the nature of this project the, the shape of it and so forth um, found that fixed works significantly better it limits where these points are looking um, and the uh, the default is is fine it usually works pretty well um, this is a highly um, computational process. It takes some time. It really depends on your machine. Um, uh, fast machines will obviously do it quicker. So um, what I'm going to do is just make sure we got everything here. Um, instead of actually doing it, I've got the uh, I've got the layer already completed. So, this is the um, the surface, and these are the values associated with it. And actually, we're just going to go in and we're going to change some of the symbology. It's a little hard to see, but there we go. That's much better. So, these are the values basically from zero to one. The values are a little bit different because of the uh, estimations that were that were done by the computer, but basically. Um, this is a surface of uh, the tidal inundation frequencies. So the high frequencies, the red, um, are is the are the areas that are that are inundated basically all the time, and the green are the ones that are estimated or inundated very infrequently. So the upland areas here in green, the red would be the channels, um, and this is the open ocean out here. So this all looks good. So we have our surface interpolated. 
um, we have a continuous surface now and we need to go in and figure out uh, how we're going to pull acreages out of here. You can't do it directly from um, the interpolation surface because it's a raster file. So we're going to need to convert that into a shape file um, and that's going to be based on those ranges from our model. So uh, this is a continuous surface. What we're essentially going to do is um, ask, ask the the surface um, or, or request a, uh, a range and that those are going to be our, our various habitats. So here's our model again. So we got our surface. So we're going to have to go in and request. Um, so we're looking for this range. So we've got the mud flat range from about uh, 48% to let's say 74%. So those percentages, that range is going to be what we ask the uh, the interpolation surface for, and we're going to create a shapefile for each different habitat type, and that's going to be our next step.